Sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you have revealed yourself as the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You have poured out on your people the spirit of truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the good shepherd leading us to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, Amen. and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, our God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, and only God of the Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. I prayed and understanding was given me. I entreated and the Spirit of Wisdom came to me. I esteemed her more than sceptres and thrones. Compared with her, I held riches as nothing. I reckoned no priceless stone to be her peer, for compared with her, all gold is a pinch of sand, and beside her, silver ranks as mud. I loved her more than health or beauty, preferred her to the light, since her radius never sleeps. In her company, all good things came to me. At her hands, riches not to be numbered. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of our life that 
reading from the letter to the Hebrews. The Word of God is something alive and active. It cuts like any double-edged sword, but more finely. It can slip through the place where the soul is divided from the spirit, or joints from the marrow. It can judge the secret emotions and thoughts. No created thing can hide from him. Everything is uncovered and open to the eyes of the one to whom we must give account of ourselves. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Mark. Jesus was setting out on a journey when a man ran up, knelt before him, and put this question to him Good Master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You must not kill. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not bring false witness. You must not defraud. Honour your father and mother. And he said to him, Master, I have kept all these from my earliest days. Jesus looked steadily at him and loved him, and he said, There is one thing you lack. Go and sell everything you own, and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. But his face fell at these words, and he went away sad, for he was a man of great wealth. Jesus looked round and said to his disciples, How hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. 
The disciples were astounded by these words, but Jesus insisted. My children, he said to them, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. They were more astonished than ever. In that case they said to one another, Who can be saved? Jesus gazed at them. For men, he said, it is impossible, but not for God, because everything is possible for God. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In our quieter moments, we may sit down and reflect on what we think God wants from us, and our mind may go to those many acts of virtue, like, for example, doing more to help the poor and the marginalised in our community, or being more attentive to God and to others. But those works alone, good as they are, won't save us. What God needs from us to save us is complete surrender when we get to the point of giving up everything, and not just talking about money here, but when we can say, I'm helpless, I have nothing left. That's when God can work through us to save us. Salvation isn't ours by right. We can't earn it, it's given to us. So, whatever we accumulate in this life, whether it's fame or fortune or health or good looks or a good reputation, or moral righteousness, none of that will move God's favour towards us. What will tip God's favour in our direction is helplessness and our surrender. Nowhere is this more evident than in today's Gospel. A good man, uh, we believe he was a young man, comes to Jesus and asks a searching question. What do I have to do to find eternal life? When Jesus gives his answer, it's clear and simple. Uh, in essence, go and sell everything you own and then come back and follow me. The young man declines Jesus' invitation and walks away sad because he is unable to give up his possessions. When Jesus turns to the disciples to explain the meaning of this story, he says, It's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. When Jesus says this, the disciples are stunned. They give up. If that's the case, they say it's impossible. Who can be saved? Now this response by the disciples is pretty ordinary, but it's music to Jesus' ears. All these weeks through the Gospel, we've been listening to how the disciples completely misunderstand Jesus and not hear what he's really saying. But this time they get it right, even though it might be accidental. They surrender. They admit their helplessness. And this admission allows Jesus to tell them the real meaning of the story, which is, for you, for we humans, yes, it is impossible, we can't be saved, but for God this isn't impossible. Again, in our quieter moments, I think we understand this. No amount of physical or material wealth can get us into heaven. Heaven is given to us when we surrender and give everything we have. 
all we have to do is give it up. Perhaps this is easier for older people to understand. When we're young, we're always on the move, we're always looking to advance, and we're always looking to grow. When we're young, it's more about being assertive and achieving and accumulating. The man who approached Jesus, we think, was young. And this story would have been more tragic if this was an old man who had come to Jesus and then declined his offer. In the order of things, surrender is for the mature. After middle age, life isn't so much about claiming worthiness or about building things or about ego. It's more about getting in touch with and accepting our helplessness. Age, eventually, will bring us to our needs. And all those things that we carefully built over a lifetime will begin to mean less and less. But that's okay because that's as it should be. Salvation isn't about great achievements. It's about God holding us in this great embrace and us surrendering to it. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified and conscious life. He suffered death and was buried, and then rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Let us ask God to forgive us for our selfish love. That we may apologise to the people that we have hurt or treated unfairly. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, that we may thank the people who fill our hearts with heavenly music. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that we may show gratitude to the people whom we count as friends. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that we may truly appreciate those who have helped us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that we may forgive the people who have hurt or wronged us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that we may honour the people on whom we depend. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Almighty God, speak to us that we may hear you. Help us to say yes to you and forgive our half-heartedness and selfishness. Help us to follow where love may lead. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen.
that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with angels, archangels, thrones, and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Brian our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. 
welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Well, we will count down now to um, being able to open up church and come back to Mass. As I mentioned last week, uh, it is planned that we will uh, be back at Mass on the weekend of the 30th and the 31st of October. Uh, now there, there is a, a meeting with the Bishop and uh, people from our diocese to discuss that opening up plan early next week. So if there is any change to the plan, I will certainly let you know as soon as possible. Uh, but please keep in touch with our website and uh, the weekly message that is sent out by email, and uh, all the information about that plan to open up will be there. And if there are any changes, we'll inform you as soon as we can. Enjoy the week ahead. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.